MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news, reviews, events, and special offers via video media. I'm at MRT Castings in Andover. These guys have been buying machinery from White House Machine Tools for over 20 years. In fact, there's been over 20 machine installations over that period of time, and their machine of choice is the Brother. So one of the men behind the success here at MRT is Phil Rawson. He's the managing director, and I'm going to go and have a chat with him. Phil. Good morning, Phil. How are you doing? Hi, Paul. Yeah, good. What, what's behind the, the brother purchases uh, in over the last 20 years? Well, at, at the heart of the company, we're an aluminium die casting foundry. So die casting is a, is a fast process. We're obviously producing near net shapes. So in terms of machining content, we're not taking out an awful lot of material, so we need a very fast machine that can keep up with the die casting process. Accurate, repeatable, and really, in all the time we've been dealing with Brother over the last 15, 20 years, that's what the machines have been. Very, very fast, um, you know, very accurate machines. Because fast is a big word, but when we look into fast, what are, the, what are the characteristics about fast? Are we talking about the speed of the spindles? Are we talking about eliminated downtime? How do you see that? It's got lots of different aspects to it, but. Obviously, we're, as I say, not taking a lot of material off, um, but we're performing a lot of different operations. And so we need very fast tool changes, um, and we need a decent-sized tool magazine. We need fast acceleration, because again, they're fairly short operations. And also, we're trying to get parts off complete, so we need to hit lots of faces. You'll see in a minute, we've got rotary tables on most of the units, and so we need fast indexing. So it's about minimising loading, minimising downtime, and, and yet yeah, very fast operations. So it's a collective of all those key features that give you the speed. You've got fourth axis machines, so are you looking to do most of the machining in one component in one hit, really? Absolutely. Um, so if we've got a part where we need to hit six faces, then with our current setup, yes, we'd either need two positions on the same fixture um, or, or two fixtures, which we can handle with a twin pallet machine. But yeah, we want to have as, as little loading as possible um, and get the part off complete wherever we can. And I mentioned downtime. Do you work double shifts? Are the machines literally running to the maximum hours available? So generally we're working extended day shift. Um, we have worked double shift in the past, um, but actually these machines are very productive. Um, and so we, we can get an awful lot of hours out of, out of a single shift. Um, and our guys fortunately enjoy the overtime. So um, yeah, we can work a pretty long day. It's a win-win. So with the machines that you've got here now, I know you bought over 20 over the last 20 years, as I mentioned earlier, but how many machines are actually in operation as we speak in the company? So at the moment, we've got 18 brother machining centers, of which seven of those are twin pallet machines and the rest are single pallet machines. And do you trade in the older brother machines for newer ones as new models come about or as you're looking to maybe you know, improve those cycle times a little bit more? To be honest, yeah, the, far, the, the newer machines have, have given us improved cycle times and there's real benefits. They've also given us bigger working envelopes. But actually, the company's been growing over that period of time. And so the older machines are still in operation. We've just been adding to the range. So, yeah, we've added faster machines, but the old machines are, are still in operation and still working hard for us. As a machine tool, they're a popular machine, but they've also got a very good reputation for reliability. You'd, you'd second that? Absolutely. They're Japanese built machines. They're quality machines. They're very reliable. We've got an excellent relationship with White House Machine Tools who've been looking after us for the last 15, 20 years. We have preventative maintenance contracts with them. So you know, White House and us are doing our bit in terms of looking after them with an annual service. But in terms of breakdowns, really, it's, it's generally operator error with we have a little, little bang um, if there's been an error from an operator. But in terms of machine reliability, yeah, very good and an excellent backup spares in the UK, plenty of engineers, so it's, it's not a problem in that respect. And I know a little bit about machine tools, I like to think. I don't know much about die casting and it's been a bit of an education today, but just tell us a little bit for our viewers about your processes that you can uh, undertake here. Sure, well, we're producing aluminium die castings. Um, in die casting terms, we're at the, the small to medium volume end of the market. We steer clear of high volume automotive type work. Um, but die casting is basically trying to produce a near net shape. So we're taking molten aluminium, we're injecting it under pressure into a hardened tool, tool steel die. And that's a very fast repeating cycle. We're producing parts as quickly as 40 second cycle times and sometimes multiple parts in a tool. So 
when we then got to perform the, the machining operations, we've got to be able to keep up with that. So you do both then, you do the casting right the way through to the machining, do you do assembly as well, do you complete the process? Yes we do, um, so just like we try and get our, our machining operations off in a single cycle, we're trying to deliver our, our components to our, our customers as a single operation, so casting, machining, we also look after surface finishing, so painting, plating, those sort of things, and final electromechanical assembly. And you touched on a point earlier about buying machines from White House that are a little bit bigger. I know that's one of the reasons we're here today, so let's go and have a look at your new S1000. Let's do that. So then, Phil, we touched on the fact that you bought some bigger machines, and that's these new S1000s. It's the first time I've seen them, actually. But why did you go for the bigger machines? Our range of castings has grown over the years. We're now producing physically larger parts. We're also hitting more faces of them, or we need to be fitting more parts on a fixture. And so, really, these larger machines just increase the working envelope of what we can achieve. Um, but we can still fit our smaller components on, and we haven't had a, a sacrifice of, of speed um, or versatility. It just gives us the option that we can fit larger parts on as well. So before Brother introduced the S1000, you would have had other machines. Did you, did you know they could satisfy this market for you as well? Or? So as we've grown, Brother's range has grown. They've actually been talking to us during that time. So whether it's, it, it's that they listen very well or whether it's coincidence, obviously other developments in the market. But we sat down with Brother a few years ago. They came over from Japan and, and they said, what are you looking for next? And we said, well, ideally we want a larger machine. We want to be able to swing larger components. We want a bigger x-axis. Two years on, here they are, exactly to the spec we needed. So this is a great example as a machine of uh, Brother may be known for small, compact machining centres, quick machines, but now they've got that, but with the addition of the bigger capacity. Correct. So we're still BT30. We've still got the fast tool change, the same rapids acceleration, very fast controller. So any of the parts that we had fixtured and programmed for our smaller machines still go on here. But yes, we've got now a 1,000 in the X, we can swing 550, so we can fit the larger parts on, but if we choose to use it for smaller work, then we haven't made any sacrifice in speed. So it's the best of both worlds, and you bought two machines at the same time? Yeah, our theory with, with machines is where we have quick cycle work, it works very well on the twin pallet machines. Where we have a longer cycle, we're more economic if we have a single operator running a pair of machines. So if you take the part that we're running at the moment on here, we need to hit six faces, so therefore we need two operations. So we pass the, the, the component from op one to op two. And normally that means that we'd have both spindles cutting at the same time for a large proportion of the cycle. And they're both positioned nicely here in your new factory. And you've got another one that you've just purchased as well, I believe. Not a, not a machine, another factory or another facility. Yeah, so um, our business grew by 70% last year. So six of the brother machines that we have, we've put in in the last 18 months. We needed extra space. So yeah, we were fortunate that extra space became available very close to the main site. And so this is our, our second machine shop now. Long may your success continue. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Paul. For more videos, products and news, go to mtdcnc.com or follow MTD Online on Twitter.